Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, day after day, they bombard you from every news source telling you that January 6th was the worst insurrection since Mussolini's March on Rome. Obviously, they're lying. You know that. They know that. Why are they doing it? Well, they're doing it in the hope that if they scream the lies loud enough for long enough, you will forget what actually happened. You won't remember, for example, that in January of 2017, shortly after Trump won, a fairly large group of elected Democrats tried to overturn what was a free and fair election. They were insurrectionists. The group included Congressman Jamie Raskin, Pramila Jaipal, Barbara Lee, Sheila Jackson Lee, Maxine Waters, Jim McGovern, others. And then, on the basis of no evidence whatsoever, Nancy Pelosi promoted the dangerous conspiracy theory that the election had been, quote, hijacked by a hostile foreign government, Russia. Then, on January 13th, 2017, because we kept track, Democratic Party holy man John Lewis declared that Donald Trump was not the legitimate president. Talk about breaking our norms. Then, not surprisingly, on Inauguration Day, the Democratic Party's militia descended on Washington. Hundreds of rioters committed vandalism, overturned cars, at one point lit a limousine on fire. Most of the violence was concentrated in Franklin Square. That's just down the street from the Capitol. Six police officers were seriously injured by the rioters. They threw bricks and trash cans. In all, 200 of Nancy Pelosi's forces were arrested. It took 5,000 National Guardsmen to quell the violence. That would be the first of many riots the Democratic Party encouraged during the Trump administration. Now, if you're wondering if any of that actually happened, you're seeing it on your screen, and you may be wondering, since no one's mentioned it since it happened, you can look it up, because it's all on video. In retrospect, what's interesting, though, is how the Justice Department responded to all this violence. No one at DOJ opened a criminal investigation into Nancy Pelosi, or oh, no way, into John Lewis for sparking the riots. And that was never even under consideration, because at the time, this was America. Political speech is not a crime in America. It has never been a crime in America. Even if extremists use your words to justify their violence, you cannot be arrested for their deeds because we have a First Amendment. Political speech is sacrosanct, period. The Supreme Court has ruled on this many times. It's at the very heart of our system. It is why this is a free country. But in the single most radical move, perhaps, of the entire Biden administration, the Attorney General Merrick Garland has decided to change this. The Washington Post is reporting that the Justice Department is investigating former President Donald Trump as part of a criminal probe into January 6th. Now, that may confuse you since Trump did not commit, commit any act of violence on January 6th. In fact, he publicly urged his voters to, quote, stay peaceful. When they entered the Capitol building, he told them to go home. That's all on public record. But according to Merrick Garland, Donald Trump is still liable for every single one of his supporters' crimes that day. Donald Trump's speech is violence. That's the new rule. Your speech is violence. But here's the thing. That rule applies only to you, to opponents of the Democratic Party. Supporters of the Democratic Party can still say whatever they want. So what we have here is not just infuriating or hypocritical. It's worse than that. It's the definition of selective justice. And there's nothing scarier than selective justice, which is no justice at all. And yet suddenly you see evidence of it everywhere. Carrying a legal gun in the Bronx and the chances are you will not go to jail because you voted for Joe Biden. Keep a deer rifle in your closet in Florida and Joe Biden will blame you for school shootings. That's how it works. And again, you see it everywhere. At the same moment, DOJ is investigating a former president for saying things Joe Biden didn't like. That same DOJ is apparently hiding evidence of criminal activity by Joe Biden's son, Hunter. The latest evidence comes from Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa. Grassley's office has received whistleblower complaints from within the FBI. Those complaints reveal efforts to, quote, improperly discredit negative Hunter Biden information as disinformation, thereby causing, quote, investigative activity to cease. So call it Russian disinformation, end the investigation into whatever Hunter Biden did. In the words of Chuck Grassley, quote, the allegations provided to my office appear to indicate that there was a scheme in place among certain FBI officials to undermine derogatory information connected to Hunter Biden by falsely suggesting it was disinformation. In other words, not only did they not consider charging the president's son, they actively lied to the public about the nature of his crimes. And to some extent, we saw this play out in public, 50 former intelligence officials at the highest level 
Jim Clapper, Mike Hayden, John Brennan, Michael Morrell, Andy Lightman, all claimed in public in a publicly circulated letter that Hunter Biden's laptop was, quote, Russian disinformation. It wasn't. It was entirely real. They knew it was real. Not one of them has apologized. Not one of the 50 has apologized for lying on the eve of a presidential election about facts that might have influenced voters to vote differently from the way they voted. They interfered. Those 50 Intel officials interfered in our democracy. They've never been held accountable. They've never even acknowledged what they did. That was happening in public, but in private, according to Chuck Grassley's office, one senior FBI official ordered a Hunter Biden probe closed, quote, without providing a valid reason as required by FBI guidelines. Just shut it down. It's the president's son. We want this guy to win. Don't hassle his boy. In another case, officials improperly hid damaging information about Hunter Biden in a subfolder that almost nobody at the FBI could find. Ultimately, the FBI appears to have abandoned the case. Most of the media has ignored it from the first day or lied about it. But the New York Post has stayed on this story, and so has this network, Fox. That's not because we're interested in Hunter Biden's personal life, which was unusually creepy. It's because the documents on his laptop contain evidence that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, sold political influence to our number one geopolitical rival, a country that considers us its main enemy, and that would be China. Joe Biden used his public office to enrich his family. That is a crime. It's a crime by statute, and it's certainly a moral crime. Now, publicly, Joe Biden has denied this repeatedly. He said he knew nothing about what his son was doing overseas. Here's Biden in 2019. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. That was a lie. Provably so. That was a flat out lie. You know that because we played you the voicemail of Joe Biden telling Hunter that he's, quote, in the clear after a New York Times piece on his business dealings with China. Hunter Biden accompanied his father, the sitting vice president of the United States, on trips to China and met with communist officials. So that's a lie. We've shown you the picture of Joe Biden golfing with Hunter Biden's business partners. Most damning is that we have firsthand testimony from one of those partners. His name is Tony Bobolinsky. We sat with him for an hour in October of 2020. He told us that Joe Biden stood to gain tens of millions of dollars from a business deal with the Chinese energy company CEFC. The emails on the laptop, Bobolinsky said, identified Joe Biden as, quote, the big guy. You've seen a number of journalists, reporters covering the story, including some who should know better, declare triumphantly that no document you've released connects the former vice president to this deal. How do you react to that? What's your answer to it? I want to simplify this for the American people as much as I can. On May 13th, that email was sent from James Gillier to me. I didn't generate that email. James Gilliard generated that email. And in that email, James Gilliard goes through intimate detail of what each individual's requests were from a compensation perspective and how the equity in the enterprise would be divvied up. Very important, May 13th, that email was generated by somebody else to me. In that email, there's a statement where they go through the equity, Jim Biden's referenced as you know, 10 percent doesn't say Biden, it says Jim. And then it has 10 percent for the big guy held by H. I 1,000 percent sit here and know that the big guy is referencing Joe Biden. Um, it's, that's crystal clear to me because I lived it. I met with the former vice president in person multiple times, and I had been meeting and talking with Hunter Biden and, and uh, Jim Biden and Rob Walker and James Gillier. It's kind of amazing looking at that tape more than a year and a half later, now that Joe Biden is president. That interview took place before the 2020 presidential election. In a normal country with a free press, every claim that Tony Bobulinski made would have been run down by big news organizations. It wouldn't have been up to Fox News and the New York Post to run it down. But they ignored it and they lied about it. Now, one of the names Bobolinsky mentioned, you just heard it, was James Gillier. He is a business partner of the Biden family. 
Bobulinski told us in very specific terms that he and Gillia were setting up deals with the Chinese energy company while Joe Biden was the sitting vice president. Christmas Eve 2015, he sent you the following text, which explained the deal with China that he wanted you to become part of. And I just want to read the first sentence of this. There will be a deal between one of the most prominent families from the U.S. and them constructed by me. Yes, that's correct. Tell me what he was saying. So James Gillier was referencing something that he had been working on throughout 2015 with Rob Walker and a Chinese company called CEFC. And he had uh, been traveling around the world developing that deal. And that text was just the culmination of him making me aware that the deal was moving forward. So he, he doesn't say, I want to do a deal with you and me and Hunter Biden, or even you, me, Hunter Biden and Jim Biden. He said, between one of the most prominent families from the United States. He's talking about the Biden family. Yes, that's correct. If you think about it for a minute, this whole conversation is ludicrous. Hunter Biden was trading on his father's office. Why else would a Chinese energy company seek him out to do business? Hunter Biden didn't speak Chinese. He knew nothing about energy. He, had, in fact, never really had a real job in his life. But they promised to pay him tens of millions of dollars because why? Because of his expertise in the energy business? It's insane. And yet when we aired that video, the usual liars failed to respond. Instead, they attacked Tony Bobolinsky, a man who made not one dime for that interview, a man who caused himself untold trouble by giving that interview, a man who provided documentation to back up every single thing he said directly from Hunter Biden's laptop, but they were totally ignored. Now we're learning the FBI, which had the laptop when we did that interview, buried it directly, deliberately to protect the president. That's what Grassley's office has just uncovered. They did no investigation whatsoever. Tonight, Tony Bobulinski's claims have been corroborated once again. The New York Post has obtained a communication in which James Gillier, the man you just heard described, the Biden family business partner, panics over the possibility that Joe Biden's involvement in this deal might be uncovered. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.